and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and Pinch Bunch first of the month. We have ticked over into April and April the 1st of April is a dangerous, dangerous day um, because of course it is April Fool's Day and I am under strict instructions today um, not to pick the puzzle from the top of our uh, testers um, suggested pile but to, to do a puzzle that Mark has been saving up for me. Um, he sent me an email about this this morning. In fact, I'll probably just read you the email. Should I just read the email or should we post the link in and have a look at the puzzle first? Um, let me read you the email. Um, hang on, where is it? Let me get it. Here we go. So he says, um, OK, try this one for April Fool's Day. It has been recommended a couple of times by good people. Might be brilliant, but apparently it needs lateral thinking to be solved. Uh, um, as such, you should probably give a health warning at the start of the video. Stress this is a highly unusual puzzle for the channel. I wish you luck with it. I had a quick look and decided it was mad. So <laughs> that doesn't fill me with a great deal of confidence, as you can imagine. Um, and that is why I've decided to try this video earlier on in the day than usual, because I'm expecting I might fail on this one, I'm afraid. Um, if you're seeing this, then I haven't failed. There's spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, well, unless something very odd has gone on. But anyway, let me um, let me copy and paste into the browser what we need to do. And here we go. We're going to see the puzzle. Oh my goodness. That F jam and then there were none. Now, I don't know. The thing I'm slightly worried about here is whether this 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 instruction. Hang on, let's just. We're OK. Right. What I was worried about was whether the size of the grid was going to be odd. Um, so the puzzle that I had on the screen there, which was from earlier on in the week, was, I think, Jovial and Echo's um, Killer Sudoku, because the last few days we've had strangely shaped puzzles with clues outside the grid, and I wasn't sure what this one was going to be, but we have got clues that are all inside the grid. And Then There Were None by F. Jam. That reminds me of the Agatha Christie novel. Um, detect Let's read the instructions anyway. Detective, after... After bad weather, we have finally been able uh, to reach the island following the distress call. Though we are yet to identify each victim, it appears that all, te all ten digits died. Oh, it is. Oh, that's fabulous. In accordance with the following verse. Oh, my goodness. It is actually ten little digits sat down to dine. One was evenly spread in a sandwich and then there were nine. Nine little digits under white cliffs slept late. One was crushed by stones and then there were eight. Oh, good grief. Eight little digits heard whispers of heaven. One collapsed in the crossing and then there were seven. Seven little digits cut up Renban sticks. One chopped itself symmetrically and then there were six. Six little digits played with bows and knives. An arrow tip pierced one. And then there were five. Oh, this is just, this is unbelievable. Five little digits were tried under law. One was shot for different parity. And then there were four. Four little digits took a trip out to sea. A red herring swallowed one and then there were three. Three little digits got stuck together with glue. One was squashed between the others and then there were two. And two little digits lay under the sun. One melted at peak temperature and then there was one. One little digit with nowhere to run, oddly still killed. And then there were none. Oh, we've also found a note where one unidentified digit confesses to the murder of the other nine. Ah, so we're dealing with ten digits today. Oh, oh yeah, OK, because we start with... Yes, ten little digits. Right, sorry. OK, I'm, I'm catching up. Um, we believe you should be able to solve the mystery by filling in the grid legitimately with the nine victims, leaving out the murderer. A few extra details from the note. Normal Sudoku, oh, normal Sudoku variant rules apply. Not normal Sudoku rules apply. 
Oh. Sandwich crusts have been marked with thin rectangles and contain the highest and lowest digits in the grid. Each line of the rhyme refers only to the remaining digits. Some victims have been identified by cages in the grid. Oh my goodness me. Well, that is the single most extraordinary rule set we have ever had on the channel for two reasons. Firstly, it's probably the longest. <laughs> and I note, because of this line at the bottom about normal Sudoku variant rules apply, this video is going to be very unsuitable for anybody who's never um, who's never watched one of our videos before, because, well, I'm presuming that means that's a Kropke dot, which means these cells differ by one. But if you've never seen variant Sudoku, you will wonder how I know that. And that's a very legitimate question. So, hmm, okay. I'm slightly worried about this because it's something we don't do um, as a rule. We try to make sure every video can be watched by a totally fresh viewer. But uh, anyway, but, but putting that to one side, the other reason that this rule set is staggering is this rhyme. I, I, I want to almost pause the video, actually, and go and find the original, um, because in the original book... Um, and then there were none. There was there was a, a rhyme. I'm, I think the rhyme was in the bedrooms of all of the all of the victims when they were sent away to the island. Um, and it, it it was like this. It was like this. Ten ten. Oh, hang on, my phone's going nuts. Ten little digits. It's also quite a controversial novel, actually, because back in the day it had a very, very unfortunate title. Um, good grief. I mean, that's incredible. That is incredible. What a, what an idea. Um, anyway, this is what we have to do. We've got to solve the mystery. We are, we're going into full Agatha Christie mode here with one of the, the greatest detective stories ever written and F Jam's take on this. Good grief. Um, anyway, hang on, hang on. Let me just do a couple of announcements before we kick off and I have a think about this. So, 1st of April. Not only is it April Fool's Day, it is Patreon Reward Day. And that means, let me show you, We've got Nightmare on Sudoku Street, a uh, slightly different class of, uh, of book, shall we say, um, or not really book, but art form. Um, this is from the Skunk Works, of course, um, and 19 puzzles in this Sudoku hunt featuring this brand new Nightmare Constraint. Check it out, 4 p.m. UK time. So actually, if this video ever does see the light of day, uh, this will already be live on Patreon. Um, do join us, do have a go. If you just do five of the 19 puzzles, the first five, you'll be eligible with a chance to win the competition. If you do all 19, it's shout out on the channel time. Um, I'm sort of speeding up here because I, I want to try this puzzle. Um, Gas, Gas 2 is out. That's our brand new app. Genuinely approachable Sudoku puzzles. And in fact, if you are watching this video and thinking, what on earth is this man gibbering on about? Um, I don't understand what variant Sudoku is. Do the gas apps, because they are simple versions of the variant Sudokus we try every day on the channel. Bite-sized chunks of beautiful Sudokus. Um, then, a quick announcement on a birthday is, Josh, this weekend, I understand it's not only your birthday, it's your first wedding anniversary. And I know this because your friend Simi wrote to us and said that you enjoy sort of bonding over these variant Sudokus. So Josh, we wish you all the best this weekend. And I hope it's an occasion when you're going to have chocolate cake. And then finally, I need to read out the names and we've got more names of people who correctly solved last month's Patreon reward. So congratulations to Amit Sharma, Alice Borderier, Thaddeus Wenger, Clayton Newman, Jordan Gower, Dane Bayer, uh, Anna Marie de Hahn, who, who wrote uh, her entry in poetry, a sort of redolent of the poetry that you saw in Alice in Sudoku Land. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Ashley Hunt, Matt Elliott, Steve Tradigio, uh, 
Giannatan Gallo, I think, Tammy Holdren, Kathy O, uh, Andy Glidden, and happy birthday for last month, Andy. Um, Real Deal Kadeel, <laughs> I love it. Uh, Ipo Rama, and Ipo Rama, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciated your message. Um, Chris Renahan and David Anderson. Well done, one and all. Now, <laughs> now, uh, well, I hesitate to do this, but I might have to read out the, these rules again, actually, to understand them. Do check this out. Do have a go. I have no clue how hard this puzzle is. Uh, I suspect, though, it's very hard because Mark, I mean, he says he only took a quick look at it, but couldn't do it. So it's going to be very hard. We can say that. It's also, oh, and this is the thing I must, must stress, um, 364 days of the year cracking the cryptic videos feature uh, puzzles that are logically solvable and have a complete rule set <laughs> this puzzle appears to be an outlier um, but there are very good reasons to that driven from the fact that we have to solve this 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 murder mystery so how should we start to do this I think I have to read the rules again. I'm very sorry. Um, but I think probably if you're watching the video, you wouldn't mind re me reading the rules again, because unless you are completely a genius, um, you, it would be quite hard to assimilate what these rules mean at one reading. So, Detective, after bad weather, we have finally been able to reach the island following the distress call. All right, that's just... We can, we can put that to one side. That's beautiful, setting the scene sentence but it means nothing to us though we are yet to identify each victim it appears that all ten all ten digits okay all ten digits so i think we're using zero to nine aren't we that's what i think that must mean because if a number like 10 is not a, i don't think of that as a digit that's two digits one and zero so i think i think I think that's saying we use we're using zero to nine. They all ten digits died in accordance with the following verse. Ten little digits sat down to dine. One was evenly spread in a sandwich, and then there were nine. Okay, so that's here, isn't it? So this digit is dying, and it okay, and it's even. Because well, because grey squares are even in sudoku variants and it does say that normal sudoku variants die uh, they, they don't die they apply um okay so there is a an even digit is dying evenly spread in a sandwich what does that mean does that mean it's does that mean the sandwich crusts have to be the same distance from each side of this digit so if this was uh if this was a four that would be a three and that would be a five for instance because they would be one away actually let's do, pick a better example one away and seven because this would be uh, it's evenly spread it's evenly between the one and the seven if you see what i mean um i don't know if it means that it might do ah but do I have to explain what sandwich rules are? Oh, there was something later on about sandwiches as well. I remember it said, sandwich crusts have been marked with thin rectangles and contain the highest and lowest digits in the, oh, the highest and lowest digits in the grid. Right, so, so if if this if my interpretation of the instructions is right and it may well not be if zero is used in the grid one of those is a zero if it's not used in the grid one of those is a one if nine is in the grid one of those is a nine if eight if nine is not in the grid one of those is an eight so the i think the options for the sandwich are those cells and the options for this square are then even numbers that can't include zero because zero can't be in the sandwich because then the sandwich crusts wouldn't bound the digit in between if you're used to sandwich sudoku you will understand of what i speak um okay 
Let's go on to the next line. Nine little digits under white cliffs slept late. That sounds, that sounds like it's actually from the book, doesn't it? Under white cliffs slept late. Nine little digits under white cliffs slept late. One was crushed by stones and then there were eight. Are these the st are those stones? Nine little digits under white, maybe that's what it's saying, white cropky dots. Why, are these white cliffs? What other Sudoku variants could be white cliffs? In fact, let's go, in fact, let's just look at the grid and see if we can identify what we think these lines are. That looks like a between line, doesn't it? That's an odd digit. That's an arrow. That looks like a Renban line. That looks like a German whisper line. That looks like a thermometer. This line, a red line. Mm, parity line, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm exposing a horrible, horrible hole in my Sudoku variant knowledge. Is a red line associated with a particular Sudoku constraint? How I cannot know this. This is so embarrassing. Oh, come on. Hang on. Um, it is... I don't know. I don't actually know. I've got parity. Parity came into my mind. Um... I don't know. Okay, so so anyway, nine little digits under white cliffs that late. One was crushed by stones, which might be that digit, maybe. But we don't. We aren't told. That. Okay. Well, what we do know about this digit is that it is the extreme of a run of five consecutive digits. But if we're dealing with the digits zero through zero through nine, five, four, three, two, one. No, that doesn't. You can't even say there has to be a five on this line because you could have zero, one, two, three, four. Um, right. Okay. So I don't, I don't think I know what to do with this, and it might not even be this clue. So. Eight little digits heard the whispers of heaven. Okay, so that sounds like German whispers. <laughs> Eight little digits heard whispers of heaven. One collapsed in the crossing. Okay, so one that cell looks like it's dying to me. And then there were seven. Ah, so maybe what I should do is tick off the digits that are dying. Is that a sensible thing to do? So that died. Let's make that red. Uh, oh, no, now I can't see behind it, though, if I do that. Um, maybe. OK, I can see behind that one better. I'll, I'll make I'll use my patented dark green. OK, so that's dying. We think this might be dying. So the first three digits dying would be that one, then that one, then that one. Oh, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ah, uh, I've misunderstood something here. Because if this is right, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to identify 10 different digits that die. But one of those digits is not meant to appear in, in the grid at all. I didn't think. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to go to the end of the instructions again. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We believe you should be able to solve the mystery by filling in the grid legitimately with the nine victims leaving out the murderer. But how can I... I don't understand. So it's almost... Oh, I don't understand. A few extra details. Normal Sudoku variant rules apply. Sandwich crusts have been marked with thin rectangles. Yeah, I've looked at that. Each line of the rhyme refers only to the remaining digits. What's that trying to tell me? So that's trying to tell me that by the time this digit has been murdered, it 
does that mean I can only fill in this whisper line with digits that don't include oh if that's right so that digit would have to appear not on the whisper line in one of those two cells perhaps I don't know I'm just I'm not sure I'm not sure what's going on some victims have been identified by cages okay I don't really understand this I'm gonna to have to I'm just gonna keep going through the line the, the the rhyme and try and understand it more okay so seven little digits seven little digits cut up ren band sticks well that must be here one chopped itself symmetrically what does that mean one chopped itself symmetrically and then there were six okay so it's saying that digit died is it because that's the one in the cage it's very unclear what's going on here this definitely lateral thinking or we, we, we used to have an expression in crossword uh, editing gwit i guess what i'm thinking um so <laughs> this is a gwit this is a gwit filled puzzle um okay so what are we saying here we're saying that there's a renban line a digit dies on the renban line and it chopped it one chopped itself symmetrically is this does this have to be a symmetrical digit and if that's true you could chop three in half well it's better again now it starts to depend what font you're using um like one one could be you know if, if a one was just a you know a really straight line and didn't have the sort of accoutrement the little um the little flourishes then you could chop a one symmetrically eight you could chop symmetrically oh zero you could chop symmetrically as well ah um i don't know i don't know what that's getting at but that that digit might have to be a digit you could conceivably cut in some way that was you know where you'd end up with an equal half on each side of the cut that's possible um six little digits six little digits oh uh six little digits played with bows and knives well that must be this it must be the arrow an arrow tip pierced one and then there were five right so that one is at least clear that has got to be ah ah i've got something else that is a four cell arrow now i'm only too familiar with arrows from no feet mcgee's puzzle yesterday that right so there must be a zero on this because otherwise that's going to well mm, oh i've just had a horrible thought oh my goodness me what if that what if you had schrodinger cells ah so what if that cell was something like that a 12 because it there's two digits in the cell ah now maybe that's how we could have 10 no hang on i'm not sure about that i was just thinking maybe that's how we could have all 10 digits appearing to die in the puzzle one for each line of the rhyme is because if we had sh if we were filling each box effectively with 10 digits because one of them was a schrodinger cell then we could achieve that but then i don't understand how we do the last bit of the puzzle where it says something like we have to do it with leaving out the murderer so i still don't understand it is it's fundamentally but i think well do I, how strongly do i think that this means there's a zero on this arrow I think fairly strongly is a fair assessment and the reason i say that is that is this line this line about us not being able to we're at the end somehow in the end this grid is going to be filled with nine digits is how i read it because 
we're filling in the grid legitimately with the nine victims leaving out the murderer yeah okay so that if, if these are standard sudoku variants there's no way that you can make four different digits add up to a single digit number so whatever jiggery pokery is going on in the meantime once we fill this grid with nine digits and leave out one of the digits there has to be a zero on this I think that's what that means. I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to do that. Now, if that's true, though, I've had another thought, which is that that implies zero is a murdered digit, doesn't it? think that's I think that's right if if we're saying zero must appear in the finished grid zero is a murdered digit so it's not the murderer and that means zero needs to be so zero could be there for example it's got to appear in one of the green cells that we're identifying and it's got to still be alive Does it still have to be alive when it gets to this this part of the rhyme? Um, there is something about this. Each line of the rhyme refers only to the remaining digits. So let me just read this again. Six little digits played with. You see, uh, I don't know actually. I'm not so so comfortable with that. Six little digits played with bows and knives. Now I can uh, I can only put it seems to me five digits on the line here. So maybe one of these is a Schrodinger cell. How many digits were playing with the the German whisper? Oh, se no, hang on. Seven digits were playing on the Ren band. That's not going to work. Even if with, well, even with crazy Schrodinger cells, that's, I can't put seven digits on this. I, I can't put seven digits on this, because if I do that, then I'm going to get, what am I going to put in the other six cells? I'm confused. I am totally confused. Maybe, okay, well, maybe it means, maybe it means that seven digits are available to be selected for this Renban line. Six digits are available for selection for the bow and arrow. Uh, however many digits were available for the um, the Whispers of Heaven, the German Whispers line. One, two, three, four, five, six digits. And eight, but eight little digits heard the Whispers. So, okay. If that's true, then I'm back to saying there is a zero on here. And zero has to have been, no, zero has to be alive by the time that this we get to this point in the rhyme. Which means that, well, ah, the other thing this would mean if zero is a legit is if zero is in the puzzle the final puzzle then doesn't that mean zero has to be in a sandwich uh, crust because it said in the instructions somewhere sandwich crusts have been marked with thin rectangles and contain the highest and lowest digits in the grid so zero would have to be the lowest digit in the grid so one of these is a zero so neither of these would be a one is what well, the way i think that must work because obviously we can't, there's no digits we could sandwich between a zero and a one because you can't put half into this puzzle. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Um, okay, all right, well, let's carry on. <laughs> let's carry on with the rhyme. Um, hang on. Right, five little digits were tried under law. One was shot for different parity. And then there were four. Uh, uh, 
I don't understand that one. Um, I don't understand. Oh, parity. So that's right. So this is a this is a parity line. The fish is a parity line. Um, right now, the only trouble with this is I can't remember how parity lines work. Do they? Does that mean that we oscillate parity along the along the fish? Five little digits were tried under law. One was shot for different parity. Right, so... Hmm. Well, that seems to mean... I don't understand. Actually, I don't. Uh, every, every thought I have, I can think of an immediate rejection of the logic it would imply. Um, I was thinking, okay. I was thinking this means that by the time we get to this point in the rhyme, five little digits were tried under law. We must have four of one parity left and one of a different parity, which gets shot. And then, and then we're left with four of the same parity to go on to go on to the rest of the rhyme. But then I was thinking that can't be true because how could I fill this parity line? I could obviously fill in. Look, oh, sorry, and I'm being completely inarticulate. But basically, let me just um, do the shading of the parity line. So it's going to look something like this. Now, if I've understood this correctly, one of these colours can only contain one digit, being the, the one parity digit that's left the one digits that's left of that parity by the time you get to this point in the rhyme. But if I make, let's say it's an odd digit, if I make that an odd digit, I, obviously these two are repeating in the column. And if, if we make yellow the digit that's only got one of it left, these would all have to be the same digit and that's going to break Sudoku. So that doesn't seem to be right. Um... Five little digits were tried under law. Were tried under law. Under law is a strange expression, isn't it? That makes me think I've got to be thinking of some Sudoku law. Five little digits were tried. This is so awful. <laughs> You're going to be watching this thinking, this man is totally inept. I, I know I look like I'm totally inept. I don't know how to do it. And actually, Mark is a rotten thing as well, because this is not the sort of puzzle that plays to my strengths. Because my brain goes off in too many different directions. I have this trouble on puzzle hunts and things like that. I, I cannot... My brain goes vum like that. And I, I, all of these ends are too complicated to evaluate. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to carry on. I don't understand that one. Four little digits took a trip out to sea. Ah, oh, okay. Oh. Oh, so this is a red herring. So maybe this isn't a parity line. It's a red herring. Four little digits took a trip out to sea. A red herring swallowed one and then there were three. So one of these digits, I think, is that telling me one of those? Why didn't? Why doesn't F Jam give me a um, a jobby jobby here? Um, a a cage to tell me which one of these is the stomach of? Is that the stomach of the fish? I mean, where where is it in the digestive system of the red herring? Is it at the mouth? Has it just been swallowed, or is it in the tummy? I don't know. I'm not even sure I know enough about the anatomy of fish to be sure that's how fish work. <laughs> um, a red herring swallowed one and then there were three. I don't know what that means. I think one of these digits has been uh, eaten by a red herring. 
being this thing. Um, a red parity herring. Okay, so, so we don't really know what that means, do we? And then we've got three, right, three little digits got stuck together with glue. One was, oh, okay, one was squashed between the others and then there were two. Right, so this is the between line. I, I can actually interpret this one, I think, with some confidence. So two little digits, oh no, one, three little digits got stuck together with glue. So that's those three digits. Um, one was squashed between the others. Well, that's going to be that one. And then there were two. So this one gets murdered. Uh, and the way that between lines work, if you've never seen them, is the circles at the end of the line have to contain digits that frame the middle digit. So if this was, I don't know, two and seven, then this digit would have to lie between two and seven. Uh, now, two little digits lay under the sun. This is going to be the thermometer one. One melted at peak temperature and then there was one. So that's that digit. That digit gets murdered. Uh, now, one little digit with nowhere to run, oddly still killed, and then there were none. That looks like that digit to me. That is an odd digit because of the, the grey circle. That's what odd means in variant. Well, that's what <laughs> grey circles mean in variant Sudoku. And it's in a cage, which I think it means it's some victims have been identified by, by the cages in the grid. So... So we've ended up being successful at identifying eight of the ten victims. We haven't identified the middle two, have we? We've not identified... Um, the ones who were tried under law and one was shot for different parity. And the four little digits who went well. One of these is 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 in the fish's gullet, and that's that's also going to be killed. So, but 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 hang on, I come back to the problem. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I had a. I suddenly thought then. I was, my thought was that I've got eight green cells, so I've got eight killed digits, but these eight killed digits have to appear in the grid. One of these is being killed when it gets swallowed by the fish. That's a ninth digit. But the line of the thing that says five little digits were tried under law, one was shot for different parity and then there were four. That's interesting because it's the only clue that doesn't seem to specify a cell, really. Now, I thought that it was going to relate to the parity along the, well, what I assume is a parity fish line. But, I, I mean, maybe I've just not understood the nature of, maybe I've not understood the nature of the, the red line that's very possible or maybe this is this is the clue this is the clue to the murderer digit so the murderer doesn't appear in the grid because we know the murderer doesn't appear in the finished grid at least so if if the murderer is shot for different parity Five little digits were tried under law. One was shot for different parity, and then there were four. I don't know. It's possible, isn't it, that that's how it works? So, so, so the digit that's shot for different parity at this point in the in the in the rhyme is. is the murderer because we can't identify a specific cell for it okay oh, wow um <sighs> well the problem we've got no not the problem a problem we've got here is that i have not got a clue what to do now 
I can fully appreciate how clever this is in terms of the, you know, to construct a rhyme. that allows this puzzle to be finished. I don't know. I also think that there is, I think a lot of this, like the White Cliffs thing, that rings a vague bell with the original. I'm sure it was on the South Coast um, and then there were none because I think I've, I've seen it on TV recently. Hmm. I don't know. So maybe, maybe, maybe a lot of this language is borrowed from the rhyme. One was crushed by stones, and then there was eight. Um. Right. Let's try this digit. I think, because that digit has to have four different neighbors on a green line but ordinarily that would be beautiful because we could instantly say that this would need to be an extreme digit being a one or a nine because the way German whispers lines work if you're if you're if you've never seen German whispers lines the way they work is that adjacent digits on the line have to differ by at least five and if this was the normal world of Sudoku, where the digits one to nine were involved, these digits would therefore have to either be ones or nines, because if this was a nine, it could have legitimately four different neighbors. Let's show you. If that was nine, we could fill those digits with one, two, three, and four. And each of these digits individually is at least five digits of at least five away from nine. So that would work. But here in this puzzle, unfortunately, the existence of the zeroth digit complicates things because now, well, what would happen if that was a zero? Uh, where's zero on my palette? If this is zero, now these digits could be five, six, seven, eight or nine. So zero is absolutely an option for that square as is 1, as is 9, as is 8. So it's a bit like the sandwich crusts, actually. This, it sort of gains a degree of freedom, which is really very irritating <laughs> in the context of working out what's going on. Um, How do we do this? I mean, there must be something that, uh, that's going to allow us to get a grip on how this this works. Right, that circle has to be at least a six, doesn't it? Because we're adding, we, we, one of these digits has to be a zero, and the other three are going to be at least a one, two, and a three. So one plus two plus three plus zero is six. So that square, I think, is at least six. doesn't have to have a one on it could be two three four zero um, that's a run of three consecutive digits which is probably going to have to be it's going to have to fit in with whatever the, you know if this was if this was a one say these would be six, seven, eight, and nine. So these these three consecutive digits. No, it depends. Well, it depends. Actually, well, that's, that's a bad thought. It was a silly thought. It depends what digits these are and what digits these are. I think there's still flexibility for the for the Renban line. I mean that digit is. Oh, I've got to think about this sequentially, haven't I, as well, actually. Hang on, that might be that might be the thing I'm missing. I was just all I was gonna say is that digit is a you know, it, it could be anything. This is so unrestricted. But by the point you get to this part of the rhyme, there are only three digits left, so it's probably not restricted by the time you get to that point in the rhyme. So somehow or other, I think we've got to use the order of the rhyme 
to to help us so we know this all we know all we know is that an even digit is ma oh unless unless i'm allowed to assume You see, what would happen if I was allowed to assume that this had to be a mi had to be evenly spread between it, the sandwich crusts? I know one of the sandwich crusts is a zero, and I know this is an even number, so it would have to be zero eight with a four in the middle. Ooh, that's interesting. Am I allowed to? Do I don't know whether I'm allowed to assume that. Um, this this phrase evenly spread that could be achieved like that. What would that help me with? So it would kill a four. <laughs> if you kill a four, does that mean that this can't be, if that's an eight now? No, that's fine, isn't it? Eight works okay. You could have zero, one, two, three there. You don't use a 4 in 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then if that's 9, that still has to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. If that's 0, we don't need a 4. If it's 1, we don't need a 4. Okay, I don't know. Um, if we've murdered a 4... It still doesn't do anything, does it? How long is this thermo? One, two, three, four, five, or six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. But 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 we have zero available, so this tip of the thermo has to be at least a five. So we could go zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this square is at least a five and it's getting murdered. That square has to be able to be on a four cell arrow. So it cannot be higher than six. That's just useless. That's just, well, it's useless, but I'm going to put it in because I really haven't got a clue what I'm meant to be doing here. That digit's odd. Okay, one, three, five, seven, nine. <laughs> um, this should have played right to Mar Mark's strengths. Those three digits all have the same parity. because they must be separated uh, you know if this is even that's going to be odd that's going to be even that's going to be odd that's going to be even that's got to be a string of five five numbers because the white dots mean that the two cells in the domino are consecutive digits uh, and this is all this this is all assuming this as well wasn't it which is okay i'm going to take out that assumption i don't think that does anything um zero eight nine were, were the options for the sandwich thing i think this is well the reason i don't like doing this is it didn't do anything for me and i presume that when we have the right idea we will at least be able to make progress he says probably naively um right so nine little digits slept under the white cliffs we're assuming that's here one is crushed by stones, and then there were eight. I don't see how to extract any information about that at all. I think literally this could be anything. Eight little digits. Oh, heard the whispers of heaven. Well, I've thought about the whispers of heaven, and I haven't got a clue how that works, really. Seven little digits cut their Remban sticks. One chopped itself symmetrically, and then there were six. Oh, okay. So maybe I've got I have got to make an assumption about what that digit can be. That's possible, isn't it? Um, eight little digits, seven, six. Oh, then we get the arrow. I sort of understand the arrow, I just don't know how to do it. 
and then we get the stuff I don't understand about five one was shot for different parity so does that imply that by the time you get to the fifth part of the rhyme or ten nine eight seven six so by the time you eliminate digits ten nine eight seven six from the piece or the piece even by the time you do that the five digits you've got left at that point are four of one parity and one of another that is how I read that one was shot for different parity I mean how could you have if you've got five digits to pick from if you had two of if you had two of two two odds and three evens why would you be shooting you know how would you decide which one you were shooting I think that feels like you've got four of four of one parity and one of the other parity Now, hmm, here's a thought. Oh, restart my device. No, I do not want to restart my device. Bit defender. Um, here's a thought. The last line says one little digit with nowhere to run, oddly still killed. Now, if that's the final digit that's being killed, then that's odd. That would imply, going back up here, that the sixth The six little, no, 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 sorry, the five little digits that were tried under law, one was shot for different parity and then there were four. Well, that should be four odd digits left then in order that by the time we get to the first part or the first line of the rhyme, sorry, the one, one little digit with nowhere to run, oddly still killed, which I think is this digit. And then there were none. So, so that, if that's right, which I, I think we should take this with a healthy dose of skepticism then we could say that by the time we reach five little digits being tried under law we have to have murdered four even digits because because we're dealing with zero to nine we've got more even digits than we, we normally have in Sudoku normally we only have four even digits because we have two four six and eight here we've also got zero available so we've got five even digits oh but it might be complicated by the murderer as well I don't quite understand what's going on there but we've got to okay I think the first few lines of the poem kill a lot of even digits think that's how, how that's what I think is going on we know in fact we know one even digit is getting killed there so I'm not sure I'm actually not even sure that's useful so the early the, the digits that are being killed early are this one this one this one this one and this one so there are five there are five identifiable digits that are killed early and my claim is that by the time yeah no, no even with the murderer even with the fact there's a murderer we have a line for each digit in the poem. So if there are four digits left after killing the odd, the odd parity digit, by odd I mean the leftover parity digit from the fifth line, then I do have to, the first five lines of the poem, so 10, 9, 8, 7 and 6, do have to have killed four even digits so there's only one odd digit being killed in the first five lines if this is correct now which one of these is odd then which one of these that I've got highlighted so this one that one is not odd 
that could be odd that could be odd that could be odd and that could be odd it doesn't matter does it if that's odd all three of these are odd I don't know. I don't know what to do. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, the other thought I was going to have was uh, this symmetrical chopping. S one of them is cut symmetrically or something. Where was that one? That was that was on the Renban line. Renban sticks. Seven little digits cut up Renban sticks. One chopped itself symmetrically. And then there were six. So if that digit is chopping itself symmetrically, what do we think? Eight? It, depend, it does depend, but I mean, it's not clear, is it? Three? Three cut in half? Do we do it by the by the Renban line? If it's got to be vertical symmetry, eight would be one. One might be one if one has got no accoutrement. Zero. Zero is very nice as well, isn't it? Zero is very nice as well for another reason. Which is that you would then know exactly what the Renban would be. It would have to be zero, one, two. That would be a high digit. which I can't immediately rule out. If that was eight, what, what does that do? If that's eight, this has got to have, it's got to have a seven on it. It doesn't necessarily have to have a nine on it. Uh, ah, ah, I've actually got something here. That's, that is not an eight. No, I well, I'm not. I'm not totally certain about this, but I'm going to try and claim this can't be an eight because of that cell. If this is an eight, I've got to put seven in one of those squares. But the other digit that's going to be on the line that's going to be consecutive with eight, because uh, by the way, if you're watching this and you don't know what purple lines are, I sympathise. Purple lines are a set of consecutive digits. So if I put eight here, this is either. 876 or it's 987 that's it's that's the t only two things it could be but whichever one it is when it's combined with this digit that is the set of digits six seven eight and nine and that would mean firstly that this has to be low but it's much more i think much more problematic than that because this being low whether it's zero or one means that these digits have to be selected from the digits 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 because they have to be at least 5 away from this digit and you can see that if this is 6, 7, 8, 9 as a quadruple you, you could put 5 in one of those squares but the other digit would be impossible so I don't think this works so if we're allowed to right, this is, this is quite interesting actually because if we are allowed to assume that this is this has to be a symmetrical looking digit chopped itself symmetrically unless oh, unless that's just saying it's in the middle of the line so we're playing on the Renban sticks one chopped itself so i don't know I, I i quite like the idea this has to be a symmetrical looking digit I, well anyway it can't be an eight that that i have absolutely proved and it also for the same reason can't be a nine because then it would be nine eight seven six and this would still be broken uh but nine is not a symmetrical digit so what do we think? It could be zero. Zero is the next most obvious symmetrical digit, I think. I'm looking at the keypad here, trying to decide which which I think is the most likely. Three, uh, you know, after this, I don't really like the thought of one being symmetrical. It's so, it's so not symmetrical when you look at the classic shape of a one. I mean, is it is it legitimate to just view a one as that? 
Hmm. Hmm. In most typefaces, I would say not. Three is the other one that I think is quite interesting. Chopped itself symmetrically. I quite like the idea that the Renban line itself is doing the chopping, in which case the three wouldn't work. I'm going to try this with, oh no, I've ruled out eight. I'm going to try it with zero. And not, well, the other reason for trying it with zero, which is interesting, is at least I know what's on the Renban line. So if this is zero, then we've got to put a one, two pair here because this has to be consecutive. And that square look becomes high, which means that, well, it means these digits all have to be, ah, can we rule out eight from here now? I think we might be able to, if that's eight, these have to be five away, so they would have to be zero, one, two, and three. Yes, you take a repeated three. This has to be nine in this curve. This is actually the, the most interesting thing about this is that it is actually doing things. Zero, one, two here, nine here. These have to be from digits that are five away. So four, three, two, one, and zero. But the, whoopsie, zero and zero and zero. But these two can't be 0, 1 or 2. So they have to be 3 and 4. That has to not be 9 now. These have to not be 3 and 4 now. Oh, I see. Yeah, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. The tail of the cross here. I wonder if this is a cross because... It sort of signifies death as well. Oh, that, that was very cool. Um, that can't be a four. No, even in this strange puzzle, that can't be a four. Because if that's a four, the only four is the most monogamous digit apart from, well, no, in, in this puzzle, four is really very monogamous. It only has one partner. If we're looking for Sudoku digits that go into this puzzle that are five away from four. It would have to be uh, nine on both sides of it. And even in this puzzle, that's not going to work. So that would have to be three. That would have to be four. This would have to be eight, which means that's not an eight. So this has come right down. Four has come out of that square. So this has become two, six or eight. Ah, ah, here is a little point. Here is a beautiful little point. If, if we're right and this is a zero, because it can chop itself up symmetrically and it can't be an eight, then that forces this to be a nine, which means nine appears in the grid. Now, if nine appears in the grid, am I allowed to assume that this is a zero nine pair now? Because I've, I've got zero in the grid and I've got nine in the grid. And the murdered digit is not allowed to appear in the grid. Uh, but this, the problem with this is... Oh, well, I mean, there, there are many problems with this. The main problem I'm foreseeing is that this now... I still don't understand... I still don't understand how this is going to work in terms of digits being um, well unless that sixth line or fifth line whatever it is is saying one shot for different parity and it I don't have to I don't have to identify it in the grid maybe that's what's going on okay so let's assume that because zero and nine are in the grid they are the extreme digits of the sandwich because that's what the instruction said something like sandwich crusts have been marked with thin rectangles and contain the highest and lowest digits in the grid now if that's true because these have to be a zero nine pair you can see we can actually do that that's got to be zero that's got to be nine which means this can't be um, well the downside of this is that this now can't be an even split between the zero and nine. It can still be even. So it depends what the word evenly means. It might just mean an even digit. What did it, oh, what was the wording for this digit? Was it oddly? 
oddly still killed. Hmm. And this is evenly spread. So maybe that's all that's saying. It's just got to be an even digit. Uh, now those can't be zeros. So these digits, oh well the problem is these digits, we don't know what they are. They want, they're not zero, one, two, so they're from five, six, seven and eight. But if, okay, well, here's an interesting thought. A, oh. Well, here's another interesting thought. If this is right, and I have, I have my suspicions it's not. If this is right, then the murdering digit is a five, six or a seven, because eight has appeared in the grid by force. And in fact, in this column, that's another way of proving that, isn't it? The, 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 we've effectively put seven digits in the grid of the ten digits that are potentially murdered, murderable. Um, so this square is a five, six or a seven. Yeah, so we should, I think where we're meant to look now is here, isn't it? Because this line now has to have a one and a two on it because it's either one two three zero adding up to six or it's one two four zero adding up to seven right so that digit is not five or six these digits are from that coterie of digits with this one not allowed to be zero um, Oh, bah humbug. Um, let me just think about this. Hang on. The good thing about this is I haven't used this red fish yet, uh, which is a good thing because I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember what red lines are meant to mean. Um, So, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sure that this is obvious to some people. Uh, do am I allowed to assume that this can't be an eight? because eight survives to exist on the whispers line. I just, I don't know. See, if, if that was all true, I could just write a six in here because two also appears on the whispers line. So that could be a six. which would mean six would be in the finished puzzle, which would mean that the murdering digit was a five or a seven. I'm just not sure. I'm, I'm not very confident about, about that. Uh, let me just read this rule again. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Each line of the rhyme refers only to the remaining digits. So if, if this did eliminate two, well, if it did eliminate two, am I allowed to put two on the bows and arrows where they were, they were playing on the, on the bows and the knives or something? Six little digits played with bows and knives. I mean, why would the two be allowed to play on the bows and the knives if it had been murdered already? I don't think, that's certainly not how I read that. I accept that that might not be a legitimate assumption though, but I'm already making assumptions galore. Um, let's just think, what assumptions have we made to get to this point? We've made the assumption that that digit is a symmetrical looking digit. And I didn't rule out whether this could be a three.
So I've also made the assumption this is a vertically symmetrical, it's being cut by the Renban line, which is quite possibly not a valid assumption. Uh, I made the assumption that because 9 has appeared on the green line, 9 appears in the finished grid, and therefore that's a 0, 9 pair. It is tricky, this. It's, very, it's a very, it's a fascinating puzzle, but it's very, very unusual for us to do puzzles like this on Cracking the Cryptic, um, where it's, it is, it is sort of guess what the, guess what this might mean type situation. But on the other hand, I think for some people, I totally believe it, although it may not play to my strengths, I think there will be people out there who try a puzzle like this and they love, they love that not knowing, you know, that sort of, oh, what could it mean type feeling. It's not for everybody. It's not normally where, where I like to sort of find myself in puzzle world. It's, it's a more like a sort of, it's a type of sort of listener crossword finale type thing where you know you solvers must turn to the task of uh finding two titular opponents in a thematic and represent thematic way or something whatever whatever it was at the end of asilag by elgin all the, two decades ago um right so what do we know now we, well, I'm not sure. I have a suspicion I might be allowed to say that that's a six. Which wouldn't do anything for that digit because all that's saying is six is a la and it isn't allowed. No, oh, hang on. Would that make that a seven if I kill six? Hang on, hang on, hang on. If I make this a two, I'm saying I've killed twos off and I don't want to kill twos off because I want to allow them to play on the bow and knives. If I make that an 8, I'm not allowed to make it an 8 because I want the 8 to be available for the Whispers of Heaven. So I make that a 6 and kill it, which would make that a 7 and tell me that the murder digit was a 5. The murdering digit was a 5. But if the murdering digit is a 5... That line becomes interesting all of a sudden, doesn't it? Because that would imply, um, if we can't put 5 on a 5 cell sequence, it's either going to be 0 to 4, it's going, well it's going to have to be 0 to 4 on here. So that digit would, uh, that doesn't work. Uh, something's wrong with that, my logic there. Because that would make this digit a 2, and then I couldn't make this arrow add up. Ah, that's contradictory. All right, so maybe I'm not allowed. Maybe I'm not allowed to make the assumption here about this. So this gets murdered. This gets murdered. But all, all we're really saying, perhaps, is that it can't get murdered again. It's not in a double jeopardy situation. I think I think it might be possible that it still gets used. I don't understand how I could murder a six here and then not not be allowed. If if I murder six that's a seven. No, no, I've got to put six in the grid. Oh, hang on, I'm getting confused. No, yeah, I've got to put six in the grid because six appears in the grid. But I can't use it in it. So that would be a seven. That would be a six. And there'd be no five in this column, which means there can be no five in this column. Which means that has to be zero to four, I think. I'm very confused, as you can see. That would make zero, zero, one, one, two can't put a 2 on this line so the minimum it could sum to would be 0, 1, 3, 4 which is 8 which would clash so that just doesn't work as a logical sequence so 
that implies I am allowed to kill. Which either means I can ki I kill six, but I can still put six on lines like this, or it means I could kill two or eight, and I'm still allowed to put twos and eights on the green lines, or twos and eights on the whispers. So effectively, I think what we're learning is that when we kill digits, they can still play a part. You know, I could still... Well, yeah, if I kill a two here, for example, I think I'm still allowed to put it, or treat it as allowed to be playing on the bows and arrows line bows and knives line which it mm, slightly think that that's problematic in terms of how the rules are worded but maybe it's because I don't understand the puzzle all right so what what on earth am I meant to do then now well mm, the other thought is it could mean that where I'm up to in the puzzle is total and utter nonsense well, that would be very sad. Uh, hmm. <laughs> so we've killed we've killed a two, six or an eight. And then we've killed that. And then we've killed we've killed nine, haven't we? And then we've killed zero. Ah, if I've killed zero, that can't be a zero. Zero doesn't seem to be in there anyway, but that can't be a zero because I've killed zero by the time I get to the, um, this digit, I think. I think that that's feels right. Yeah, that, sick, that bows and knives clue is after the Remban sticks clue. Here's one, and then there were five. Five little digits were tried under law. Oh, one was shot for different parity, and then, oh. Ah, ah, well, hang on. I've killed a nine early. I, ah, this is huge. Oh, hang on, I've just noticed that can't be a nine either, because nine's already been murdered. Um, this is on this presumption. But what I've just had the thought about is that we worked out before that when, when we were killing off digits, the first few digits that needed to be killed off could only include one odd digit. And that odd digit has already been murdered. So these other digits that we need to kill off early are all even. Now, if that's true... Well, that's always even. That has been proved to be even. What are the other early digits that happen before we get the parity shooting? Um, this this one is killing off an even digit here. So that's not that's got to be two or four. And the white cliffs digit has got to be ah. Ah, that's interesting. That digit would have to be even, and it couldn't be zero. We couldn't make this a two. So that has to be that central digit, which is even, has to be four or six. It can't be eight because it would be surrounded on one side by nine, ten. And assuming we can't have nines and tens, that's got to be four or six in the middle of this sequence. Um, hang on. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out if I can see immediately what this means. Uh, and I might be failing. I'm afraid. So if that's a four, that becomes a six. If that's a six, that becomes a seven. Uh, so 
Sorry, I realise there's not a lot of talk going on here. It's just because I'm trying to understand what, what's going on. Um, okay, so perhaps I have to pencil mark this, do I? I know these digits are even. I mean, this this digit here clearly cannot be 8 by Sudoku. So it's either 6, 5, 4, 3, whoopsie, 3, 2. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on a minute, I've got a problem here. I've got to kill. Ah! Oh! Right, hang on. How could that be a 6 in the middle of this sequence? It can't be. It can't be because if that's a 6 in the middle of the sequence, I'm going to have a 5 and a 7 in those two squares. And that's going to mean all the digits appear in the Sudoku, as in all of the digits from 0 to 9. Because I'm at the moment, I'm working on the presumption I need to kill 5, 6 or 7. So if I put 6 there, I haven't killed anything. I've got everything in the grid, unless these white Kropke dots are allowed to jump digit. Oh, maybe they're allowed to jump the, the murdering digit. That's mad, though. No, no, no. It says something like the... It says something like the, 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 the grid works legitimately or something is how I remember it. I can't refine the words now. But it, it said something like the finished grid works legitimately. And that would not work legitimately. Because I'm thinking, you know, if we murdered five for example and made that a six then on one side it would have a seven on the other side it would have a four because it would just jump over the five and we would claim that six and four were consecutive within the context of this puzzle but that feels nonsense that feels like a step too far to me right okay i much prefer the line of logic which says that if this is six there is no murdering digit because every digit appears in the puzzle and that's against the rules so i think that means this is four and if this is four we're murdering two uh it's, it's going it was twos and sixes isn't it it's a two six three five sequence like this but it but if this is four that's murdered the two here by Sudoku, which means two can't have been already murdered up there. Two can't be murdered again down here, double jeopardy. That that fixes the sequence. Ah, oh, this could be it. This could be it because this actually seems to work. And this is very exciting. When I say work, I don't mean I'm finishing the puzzle. But what what's happening here is that the logic feels sequential to me it feels like you know you make a deduction and then you get a quite a natural second deduction which is incredibly interesting now oh yeah okay and if this is a four i can't put four on the arrow more to the point so that has to be a six so now six is not the murderer this is going to be that cut we can't put four on this line I'm sure this is some uh, well I don't know this is either chocolate teapot esque we can't resolve it or I don't know but but what what I think we're coming down to is that this digit is um well whatever it it is whatever it isn't is the murderer <laughs> whatever it isn't is the murderer um that's not six Uh, that's not six. Six has been murdered down here. So that is an eight being murdered, which means that is not an eight being murdered. Yeah, look at this. Look at the way this is working. Getting that having this thought here has eliminated these in a way where they haven't repeated. And and it's it's locking this down. This has become quite a low number now.
if this is 5, we know that this has to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That somehow works, doesn't it? If it's 7, then aren't we saying that 5 is the mer... Oh, hang on, that doesn't work. Right, how about this for logic? This might not be true, but this is really late. In, in This thermometer happens really late in the rhyme. If I put a 7 in here, then that we're implying there is a 7 in the grid. So 7 is not the murderer, which means this digit would have to be a 7, and 5 is the murderer. But if 5 is the murderer, how does this line work? Surely it has to go 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh no, hang on, there's a degree of freedom. I thought that was going to force this to be a 6, and that was going to break, which it doesn't. Okay, sorry. Sorry, that's... I thought we were... I was about to prove that... Um, or which way round would it? Which way round would it be? I don't know. I'm going mad. Um, but I thought I was about to get the the nature of this digit. But I seem to have managed to not do that. Um, right. That's not an eight by Sudoku. Um, <laughs> even after all of this ludicrous stuff, it still doesn't want to tell me its secrets, does it? Do we know more about that one now? I don't know. We've got... Ah, do we know what this is murdering now? That the even digit that's being murdered is a 4. Oh, but I've got a 4 in the grid. Is that fine? I don't know. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Five little digits were tried under law. One was shot for different parity, and then there were four. Well, I know that these even digits have been shot not because they had different parity. They, they've been killed for all sorts of reasons, but not because they had, they had even parity. So the four is the only digit that can have been killed because it had even parity. And then four little digits took a trip out to sea. But hang on, now I'm now now I'm getting really confused. Now I'm getting really confused. Because if four was killed for different parity, the thing the thing that was getting me along this line of this path was that the green digits I could have nine of them in the grid and not ten, because the this digit, the four digit, wasn't sort of specified anywhere and therefore could yeah, maybe maybe my logic was suggesting that digit was the murderer. But now four can't be the murderer because four's appeared in the grid. So that would imply Well, there is another possibility here that's just that's just occurring to me. And that's absolutely evil if this is true. So four little digits took a trip out to sea, a red herring swallowed one and then there were three. What if that is a red herring? I mean a genuine red herring. So it's one of these digits is not um is not being murdered.
by being swallowed by the red herring. This is just a red herring. It's a red herring as in it it it's there is no murder digit associated with line line uh, what do you call it line the, the the line that starts four little digits to could trip out to see a red herring swallowed one that's interesting i mean it does i mean it looks very much like a red herring but obviously a red herring in colloquial language is a misleading clue it mm, the fact there is a four in my grid now is making me very very suspicious about this i think i should i think i should have I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm. I was, before I had all these thoughts, thinking that this might be on the right lines. But now I'm less confident. Having to assume that there's a red. This is an actual red. Not not an actual red herring. But you know what I mean. A red herring that really does nothing. That that actually doesn't swallow something in its gullet is. I mean, it seems preposterous. Um, right. All right. Here is a point which I have not thought of yet, which is that the three little digits that get stuck together with glue. Am I, I see, am I allowed to assume they're all odd? Or am I only allowed to assume the middle one is odd? Because the three little digits that we've got left at that point. I don't think I'm not sure that's a legitimate assumption. I think it's legitimate that this is odd. That feels right, doesn't it? It does to me anyway, because. But I don't think I can assume those two are odd. Um because again that the implication would be that when i got to fill in the thermometer i could only fill it in with two digits which is clearly nonsense yeah i don't think so i think that digit has to be odd it's not nine so it's one three five or seven um Um, if it was a one, how, how, where are my other, where are my other elimination? Where am I eliminating odd digits? That one, that one, that's two, three. I've still got, oh, I'm, I'm getting really confused now. I'm, I'm losing track of all my digits and how they're getting murdered. <laughs> 7 little digits of the Remban stick, 6 little digits with the bows and arrows. I've killed the 4, if this is right, with my different parity under law. Then my red herring, I need to be a nonsense and not killing anything. Uh, so, okay, 1, 2... Three, four. Yeah, okay, and I have the odd digit left over, which is the murdering digit. Right, okay, okay, so maybe that is fine. Maybe it is fine, I'm not sure. Um, right, so let's think about it a different way then. So in this column, I've got to include have got to include zero eight and nine yes that's a natural ah 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 huge i have to include zero eight nine because they're in the puzzle so that cell is the same as that cell it's a five or a seven and this is a zero eight nine triple and that's not nine <laughs> um 
and that's not 8 actually because there is an 8 in one of those squares by Sudoku I can see that so this is a 5 or a 7 don't know I think maybe I've got to pencil mark this thermometer or maybe I've got to come up with whatever this is the red herring just a total red herring like as in you know it's not this line has no nothing you know no quality no no logical quality possibly um what other digits could we definitely think about here eight has to make an appearance in this row it's got to be in one of those two cells so eight is in one of eight is on on the red herring <laughs> if this was five that would be hugely hugely interesting so i think the the question that we've got to address is if this is se if this is seven then this couldn't be six could it if this is seven and it couldn't be five because five would be the murderer oh i see right okay so whether this is five or seven the bottom part of this thermometer gets filled in i think i might be wrong about this this is confusing me but let, let me just go through this logic if that's five the only way that could have been five is if this thermometer ran zero one two three four that might not be possible but i can't see immediately why that's not possible now if this is seven we're saying that seven is in the grid so this is a seven which means five is not in the grid so this digit which cannot be a 6 by Sudoku and cannot be a 5 because 5 is the murderer is forced to be a 4 just as it was when this was a 5 so this whether this is 5 or 7 this is always 4 and therefore this is going to break probably isn't it is this breaking this is horrible <laughs> I'm sure it's it's going to break somewhere uh, that's a 2 that's a 1 that's not a 3 that's not a 1 yeah, look at that. All of these not resolved. Well, that's quite that actually is hugely exciting that that didn't break. I thought that was definitely going to break. Five or seven is the murderer. So how could those be five or seven? That would be killing five and seven, and that's not allowed because we we know we're killing everything else. Neither of these squares can be five or seven. Sorry, that was totally obvious, and I didn't spot it. Nine can't go here. This is a one. Oh my goodness me! That's a three. Holy moly! What's this doing to the world? This now has to be a really low digit. Oh. Okay, I think it's got options actually, which is probably good. Zero, one, or two. Because obviously we have to frame. This was obviously higher than the three. There's a three down here. There's probably some Sudoku to do now. One, yeah, there is some Sudoku to do. One goes there. So three goes here. And that means this is not a one. Which is potentially important. Um, therefore, we have got to put a zero in one of these squares. And <laughs> for our next trick, what are we going to do? And the answer to that is I haven't got a the foggiest idea. Uh, 
Um, I wish I knew which who was the murderer was now. Eight has got to appear there by Sudoku. Two has to appear in one of these squares by Sudoku. Maybe I have to, I'm going to have to make an assumption about how this line works. Because I just don't think I've got enough information here to finish the puzzle. Um, what could it be? Nine has to be in one of those squares. Three by Sudoku has to be exactly there. That could be interesting. Is that doing some magic? One and two now. Two by Sudoku has to be there. And one is in one of these squares. So this square has become a zero. Which means these squares are eight and nine. And that square becomes a zero. Oh, hang on. Why have I got a five? Oh, I've got five in the grid. Oh, now I've made a mistake here. If five's in the grid... Oh dear, <laughs> one hour 41 minutes into the puzzle. If five's in the grid, five can't be the murderer. So seven... So something's gone wrong in the final column. Because I've got... I've not put a one in it. Oh, look, I could have put a one here. Oh my goodness, right. Okay, I apologise profusely for what I'm about to do. But I hope that you will understand that in a puzzle like this, this is hard. This is a hard puzzle. That, and I think that a lot of the logic I've been doing might survive. I want to go back to where I pencil marked that corner cell. Now I think we could have done a, quite a lot more here. What did I do? I literally, no, I just filled it in wrong. Look at that. What an absolutely barbaric nonsense. Yeah, I mean, because you could see I couldn't put a one in the final column. But, but, but much more important at this juncture, much more important is to note, and something I should have seen immediately, I got so obsessed with the fact this couldn't be five, six, seven, I forgot that when I put four in it, I'm putting five in it, which is saying there's a five in the grid. So that's a seven. Sorry, that's not a seven, it's a five. And seven, seven might be the murderer. Seven might be the murderer. Um, it's, it is conceivable that seven is the murderer. All oh, right, so that's not five anymore. Now, hang on. If seven is the murderer, and that's what this is implying, that is also saying that this is a five, which actually gives us the same thing that we had before down at the bottom. That's not one. That's not three. That's not five by Sudoku. This is a one-two pair. Now, this can't, we can't murder five again, and we can't ever murder seven because seven doesn't appear in the grid, is my contention. We can't re murder nine, so that still becomes one, that still becomes three. One by Sudoku goes here, and if I'm not mistaken, we've now, well, we've now got two positions for one in the final column. I think it's going to go in this top corner, but I'm not certain. My phone was buzzing at me, and this is getting to be a very long video, and that's fine. Um, eight is going here so if that's right that seems to suggest this is a 5-8 pair and well now the interesting thing now is we know the digits that we've got to put in the puzzle that's got to be a 0 6 9 triple which I can't do anything with until I understand how this red herring works um, Okay. 
okay so I can see some things to do with zeros there's a zero in one of these squares there's a zero in one of these squares so this is not a zero there's a zero up here by Sudoku so there's a zero in one of those two cells so maybe I come back to this square maybe I just pencil mark it so in terms of what it's allowed to be it could be a one which is what i think it's going to be oh it's a, i see it's a naked single at this point which is sort of revealed by the fact that the trouble i was getting into with one in the final column it sees those five digits and those three digits and they're all different so it must be the only other digit that's allowed to be in the puzzle which is not the murdering digit so that's a one which means this is higher than one that's about as useful as a chocolate teapot literally isn't it okay so we've still got to put 0 8 and 9 into these squares and that is unfortunately unresolved but we also now know what we we've got to put 6 8 and 9 into these squares oh I thought that was going to be resolved but no it's not that's not eight, that's not nine. That seems to be able to be anything. I still am very skeptical that this is going to finish actually. It just doesn't feel like we've got enough, not quite enough information, does it? Um, I might be wrong. It's been known. <laughs> uh, Okay, all right, so if that's a 5-8 pair, I've not put 9 in this row anywhere, have I? So that must be here, which is, again, it's just not quite good enough. 2 is joining its friend the 0, so that's a 0-2 pair. this ah okay we know there are no sevens in the grid don't we so have i got any other pencil marked sevens because it would be legitimate now to get rid of those i don't know okay three in the top row has to go here so these squares are from two five and six it just doesn't seem to be enough sudoku that we can do I'd love to, I'd, I would like to sort this out, I have to say. I suspect there's a simple way of doing that. What about this row as well? We need three, eight, and nine. So this square, oh, there's an eight, nine pair I've just found in box nine. That's quite interesting. So those two squares have got to be three, not seven. No, 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 three and four. I've not put four in this box, so that's a three, four pair. So three is now in one of those cells, four is now in one of these cells. And presumably, he says, grasping at straws mightily. Oh, the three here is useful. Okay, so that's three, that's four. So four is in one of those squares, but it could absolutely be on the between line. It would still frame appropriately five is in one of those two squares I don't know <laughs> I keep thinking there's going to be other there's going to be some other implication of the rules that I haven't quite grasped isn't there because this is not I don't think this is enough to finish the puzzle unfortunately i'm pretty confident this is right i mean it would be ludicrous if this if this is you know if there is some other interpretation although i say that and there is a quite a lot of unfinished sudoku so maybe if i had picked a different line of attack i would have actually 
you know, it would have solved with more, I would have got more digits in. Two has to be there. I think I had that digit before, didn't I? How many twos have we got in the grid? Several, but not enough. Okay. Um, we might have to get into sort of colouring and things like that here. It's not impossible, is it? That would be really, really challenging <laughs> in a puzzle this difficult. If you, uh, even if once you get to this point, you still, you still can't do it without some complicated techniques. There's a one in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Yeah, you see, maybe I'm, maybe if this is a parity, a parity herring. I don't know. Uh, what about, could we justify something to do with, mm, I don't know, <laughs> I really don't know. Come on, Simon, you're nearly there, probably. Uh, I can see three spaces for a zero up there, that's not useful. There's no way I can limit this line somehow, can I? don't feel that that would be legitimate but what else could it be let's what else could it be um i don't know oh no 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 don't say that simon this is going to be totally straightforward. All you've got to do is apply your brain in the right way to it, and it will give up its secrets, I'm sure. I'm sure it will. But how? What have we missed here? This line, it must be resolvable somehow, mustn't it? It's probably Sudoku, knowing me. Which one of these digits is seeing a digit that's going to be helpful? Um, I just don't know. Two is in one of these, that's not helpful. One, if one was here, is there a reason we can't put a one? Oh, we would have a deadly pattern on ones and twos. Oh, well, unless the fish did something, which it may well do, actually. Uh, so, um, sort of. That's a little bit questionable, isn't it? All right, so what is it going to be? Three is definitely in one of those two squares. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine for these squares. That's just that's such prolific pencil marking. I don't like it at all. I'm not confident about this now. I think I've still missed a trick because this is so tricky, frankly. Um, what could it be? Are there any, is there any other cell that I've, I've pencil marked a seven into? That would certainly be bad. Or am I meant to be able to assume something about the red herring? I mean, if the red herring was a parity herring, all of those squares would now be even. Let's just have a think about that for a moment. Is that, is that what I'm supposed to be appreciating? These squares would be odd. if this is a parity herring. Would that work? Is my quest is my question for you? Um, so this would have to be even. 
and it would have to be couldn't be zero so it would have to be six or eight that would have to be zero or six that would have to be two or four and that would have to be six or eight are there any of these odd cells that see too many odd numbers to be able to be odd I don't think so it's not impossible that this is parity and that the getting this two was in some way important let me just think about this does that impinge upon a red herring swallowed one and then there were three one was shot for different parity <laughs> I don't know whether the red herring is a total red herring or not uh, this is this is not easy it really isn't easy um, let me just think about other things for a second or two here could we I'm not seeing any other Sudoku I can do, am I? I can see, actually, there is a zero in one of those two cells, which I hadn't noticed. But I don't think... I don't think that's terribly helpful. There's a five up here. There's a five here. Five and zero. So 5 and 0 occupy these squares. Three is in one of those two positions. Maybe I maybe I have to assume that this red thing is alternating parity. I'm very unsure about that, I have to tell you. But there, there are many things about this puzzle that I find quite confusing. So perhaps I shouldn't be so quick to dismiss my ideas. Um, I'm not even sure that making this a parity herring is going to help me. But it might do so let's have a think about that then so if if we can assume that this this is a parity herring uh, this square which can't be zero could be two could be four so that's a two or a four then is that doing something this square is not two or four or zero so that square is six or eight let me see maybe the, oh that does give me a six eight pair which i haven't got before in this column which might be cool so then we need zero three and five in this column so this square would have to be zero or five and that square would have to be zero it can't be zero this would have to be three or five well it's possible it's doing some sudoku nonsense isn't it this would become zero six there's now nine in this row which means there's a 9 either here or here in box 5. Oh, hang on, 8, look. According to pencil markage, is in one of those two. Well, it couldn't be in the odd square. So that would be 8, that would be 6, that would be 9, that would be 8. That would be 9, that would be 8, come on. That would be 0, that would be 9. That would be 5 now. That would be three, zero, one, three. This can't work. It, it just can't work. I don't believe it will work, but I'm, you know, you get these little moments of sheer excitement at this point where, where it suddenly seems a good grief. Could it? Could it? Is there? Is there balm in Gilead? That's a three. That's an eight now. So these are not eights anymore or nines. So this becomes a five, six pair, which is, well, might be all right. I don't know. Those two squares have got to be four and nine, I think. Okay, that's still, still working just about. 
So four is now in one of those two cells. Um, <laughs> um, come on. Eight is giving me a six here, look. Which does my six and my five. I haven't been looking for threes in the corner today. I know you get very cross with me when I when I fail to spot them. I'm sorry if, if I've done that today. It's very possible. I've got a zero, two, six triple of all things there, which seems to imply that's got to be a nine. Which means that's a nine by Sudoku. Okay. So the red herring ended up eating three and nine. Three and nine, yeah, which had been already um, already murdered elsewhere. So that does suggest that that was a red herring. Um, this square has to be a four by Sudoku. It's a naked single. So that square would have to be a two by Sudoku. So that would do the two and the one. That square's become an eight, which means that's an eight. Every time I put a digit in, I'm certain it's about to fail this. Somehow we are still going. I do not know how. Um, and this is going to be not zero and seven, zero and one. One and zero, zero and six. Somehow we've got parity preserved here. We have not put five into that row. These squares here have got to be four and something, six. That's no good. <laughs> That's no good <laughs> because four and six are unfortunately both even and that square is there. For, so this was wrong. Oh, how sad. Isn't that amazing how far that got? That got a long way. A long, long way. Oh dear, this is the well. This is one of the, ch the the challenges with a puzzle like this. Is that we're trying to guess. We're trying to guess what's going on. So we go all the way back to here, where I was stuck and was having to assume that this was a parity fish in order to make progress, and everything we've just done turned out to be a total load of bobbins. Ah! <laughs> oh no! Okay, so this is going to make it an even longer video, assuming I can solve it at all, because I might well, it might well be broken at this point. It's possible, isn't it? It's possible I've not understood something very fundamental about the puzzle, and that's why I can't solve it. I mean, this parity shading is just wrong, so I'm, I've got to take that out. Um, and did I learn anything from my little excursion into parity fish land? I'm not sure I did. I'm not sure I did. Okay. All right, so maybe we've got to do a more diligent Sudoku. I mean, I know I've not pencil marked this square, but it, I mean, it can't be zero, one, two, or three by just plain Sudoku. So knowing that this square is four or higher is just a ludicrous thing. Four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and literally, I think nothing can be eliminated from this. It's weird. It's actually a bit weird. Okay, let's try this row then in, in, in hope rather than expectation. Now four, six, eight, and nine have got to be placed. So four, six, eight, nine, and we can see this is not nine. Can we do something intelligent with this? Um, Possibly, but I don't know what exactly. <laughs> no. Come on, Simon. No, I've got nothing. 
I have got nothing here. Is it going to be... Wow, okay. I'm properly, properly stuck. Um, I'm glad I started this video early. Is it because, okay? <laughs> because if I can't do it, oh my goodness. Uh, I really don't want to give up on it though, because uh, I've just noticed, look, eight is in these two squares. So I can get rid of eights from those two squares, which has limited them a little bit more. So this square has become a four or a six now. Um, is maybe I've got to look at the instructions again. Maybe we've got to look at the instructions. Okay, so we sat down to dine and we murdered the eight. <laughs> we crushed some stones and we murdered a six. Which definitely didn't mean that we couldn't put a six in this circle. Uh, we then did some whispering around heaven and we got a one two pair here. Now that one two pair is not fixed by this being a nine. So I don't think I can use that any further. Then we did some cutting up of Remban sticks. I mean, it'd be ironic if this turned out to be a three at this juncture, but we're so many hours into this, I'm going to hope that that's not the case. Um, six little digits played with our bows and our knives. And we know that those digits, well, we think we know that they are a one, two, three. Oh, yeah, zero, one, three, and a two, which is murdered. Um, okay. Then we've got the five little digits being tried under law, which I think is murdering the four, but not in a specific position, I think. Um, then we've got four little digits taking a trip to sea with the red herrings, the red herring swallowing one, and then there were three. Now, I think this... In order for the for there not to be I don't think this can have the murdered digit in it because if it does have the murdered digit in it we've got ten digits in the puzzle because we do have a four in the puzzle and we've got eight other digits that we've specifically identified as having been murdered so we can't pop the seven into the gullet of the fish without having a tenth digit in the fish. So I think that this line is a red herring, I think. Then we've got three little digits getting stuck together with glue. One was squashed between the others and then there were two. And that's up here. And I don't think it's legitimate, is it, to claim that this digit needs to be odd because these, oh. I don't think that's legitimate. I don't think it would do. I'm just, oh, sorry, and I realize I'm corpsing again. It's because I'm just trying to think through. I'm trying to think through the implications of this not being an even digit because the only digits I've got left when I get to the point of thinking about this line are odd digits. Three little digits got stuck together with glue. Ten little, nine little digits. Sorry, and I realise I'm going over and over this in my head, but I'm I'm trying to just extract 
what I can from the clues. Eight little digits heard whispers of heaven. One collapsed in the crossing, and then there were seven. But it's already the eight here which has been murdered in the first clue is still allowed to play on the whispers of heaven because the eight appears here it's like the six is murdered here and then it appears here and it's murdered early but it's still allowed to play with the bows and the knives so the fact that the i've only got three digits left at the end to play with yeah and the fact is the thermometer Two little digits lay under the sun. One melted at peak. There's something here that I'm just not quite sure I'm getting. We believe you should be able to solve the mystery, leaving out the murderer. Each line of the rhyme refers only to the remaining digits. Each line of the rhyme refers only to the remaining digits. I don't, th I think this, this must be wrong then. But no, but how could it ever, how could this the thermometer ever, clue ever be correct? Two little digits lay under the sun. I mean, that, well, maybe it's saying that two little digits were candidates for the peak. Maybe that's what it's saying. But once the eight is murdered early, why is the eight allowed, for example, to be on the whisper? If the eight little digits heard whispers of heaven, one collapsed in the crossing and then there were seven. I just, I'm just trying to hypothesize whether there is a good reason why I could conclude that because there are only odd digits left at this point that that had to be a 5, 7 or a 9. And I could see that would put a 4 here and give me a 1, 4 pair there. It might not do enough anyway, but I'm so far away. That can't be a 7, I suppose. That's one point. I can, I can. I can agree with myself about. Okay. Um, let's try something else. Is it going to be... Um, nine is in one of those three cells. That's not interesting. Oh, eight. I keep doing this. That can't be eight, look. By Sudoku. There's an eight in one of these two squares. So that is coming down. So if I could assume this was odd, I would almost know what it would be. It would have to be five or nine. Five would be very handy. But also, if if nine's already been murdered, I could assume it would be a five then. When does five get murdered? Later. That doesn't feel very logically consistent, though. What? And one. When's one murdered? One's murdered. Oh, one is murdered last. Oh, OK. Well, that is quite interesting, then. I mean, I don't I don't think it would be internally consistent. But I'm just stuck on the Sudoku. I don't see how to do it. There probably is a way. Well, actually, I'm not sure there is a way. But I'm wondering if I'd be allowed to interpret that this clue as having to be one of the live digits, if you like, at that point. And there are only like the only live digits, three little digits got stuck together with glue. Six. 
six little digits played with bows and knives. But the six is dead at that point. So why is six allowed on the knife? Or maybe six isn't playing with the bow and the bow and the arrow. Six is in the circle. Maybe that's a very subtle distinction. And I still can't get round why the eight would therefore be allowed on the German whisper. If it, the eight wasn't allowed to hear the whispers of heaven because the eight was dead. <laughs> um, this all suggests that this is a bit wrong, doesn't it? But it, on the other hand, if we are allowed to assume that this is 135, a 5 here would do. And let's actually just see if a 5 here just cl clears everything up. That's a 5 in the corner then. 2, 6 here. I mean, I mean the other thing that this might do is it might reveal whatever Sudoku it is that I'm missing. Um... And frankly, anything would be welcome at this point. I see it. Maybe it dries up. Maybe it dries up. It's not actually gone nearly as far as I thought it might do. Well, it could, I suppose I haven't made use of the fact that would be a four, though. One, four, one, four. I've got to put zero and nine. So this square has to be a zero or a nine. And that makes that square have to be 8, which actually would work, wouldn't it? Everything would get resolved up here. That's no longer able to be 9. This now is an 8. Okay, but no, it's still... Well, it's, it's further. We've definitely got further. But I still don't feel we've got far enough. These squares now have got to be five, six, and a digit, a zero, it's zero, isn't it? Oh, so that becomes a six naked single. And those become a zero, five pair, I think. And does the six do anything? Ah, maybe it does. Six, eight, nine go in there. 8 goes on to the parity fish, which is probably no such thing. 6 is in one of these two squares. Oh, look, where does 1 go in this column now? It has to go here. 1, 4. Uh, what's the missing digit? It's 4, isn't it? That's got to be a 4. So this has become, I think, a 2-4 pair now by Sudoku, which means that square is a 0. Which means that square is becoming more restricted. Somehow or other, this, this 6 arrow is still not done, which I'm finding extraordinary. That square, where do we put 1 in this box now? It seems to have to go here. So one, zero, three go in, zero, five go into the grid. That's now got to be the five, which is taking all sorts of pencil mark positions away. Zero, nine, zero, two, two, six. Good grief. I don't believe it. One here. Is this working? Nine here. That square's got to be a three, and that seems to be a correctly given three. Come on. That one and two is now resolved by this one. So the two and the four are resolved. So the four is resolved down here. This Is this going to finish or not? I don't think it is. It still feels to me to be slightly... Oh, no, maybe I'm wrong. No, I think it is. Six, six, eight... 8 in the corner, 9 here, 5 here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, well that was... mad. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's one of the most staggering, staggering puzzles. I've ever, 
well frankly I've ever seen full stop but also that I've and I, I don't think and this is I, this is my shame I haven't quite understood it I don't think because I think well what what's did yeah the so the digit right I think this is a red herring I think I think that seven hasn't made an appearance but to, to solve it I had to make an assumption about this line only being able to be made up of the digits that were remaining in the poem at that point which which is completely consistent with the wording of the rules but it's not consistent with the fact that for example you know I, I killed six very early on and then used six on this line so there is some there's something about how the rules fit together that I haven't quite grasped I think also I didn't rule out the fact as to whether that could be a three uh, very early on I mean it's an incredibly unusual puzzle in Greg and the Cryptic Land and I hope just once a year people have enjoyed that because what I will say is that this is a very 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 impressive thing to do to take Agatha Christie's poem and rewrite it in such a way that you can solve it sort of um, I'm not going to claim it was wholly logical what I did but I did get through it I think it's it's very very clever of F Jam very clever um, and as I say I'm going to be interesting and interested in the comments on this because I think for some people they will simply fall in love with this and I totally get that because it is so unusual it requires out-of-the-box thinking um, and a different sort of brain I think to the things that we tend to focus on typically on the channel it's much more puzzle hunty you know it's sort of you're presented with something with 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 rules but not enough rules and you have to sort of quit you have to guess what guess what someone's thinking um, but for all that what that does is it means that when you do have insights into it it's incredibly uh, energizing and it just gives you these shots of euphoria as you go through it um, I'm just feeling slightly like I've let myself down and perhaps F jam down by not quite understanding how I could have resolved that final piece of the jigsaw logically and so I will look forward to the comments with interest please remember we enjoy the comments uh, especially when they're kind um, and happy April Fool's Day and I'm going to now go and call Mark and have stern words I will say no more about that. Thanks for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.